Blade Viz Review today, uh, 8 p.m. UK time. Bit of a special edition because, well, not a special edition, but a special time. Uh, it's just been a very busy week and day, so I couldn't really do it any earlier. And I'm just going to keep talking as people come online because I did kick off a few seconds early. We're going to do the usual process, and I need to quickly set up my screen share and just quickly figure that out. Here we go. So let me turn that on. What are we looking at this week? We're looking at internet speed in Europe for Maker Monday. Uh, this was the original visualization, which is a map. Maybe a quick bit of input on this map. So this is looking at download speed. The map is color coded. <clears throat> so it's a gradient color from a kind of light aqua blue to a very dark, rich, almost like a, oh, I forget the name of it, like a, almost like a purpley blue. Uh, I, I, I can't quite think about it. But then we've got municipalities, there's other stuff going on. So there's a bunch of data, uh, but that's the data set. If you haven't done it yet, if you're new, if you're curious, data sets can be found on makeovermonday.co.uk slash data. Let me just check if this displays correctly. I think I need to make it a little bit wider to kind of fill up the screen. And what we're going to do as usual is we're going to have you all jump in the chat, say hello, uh, say where you're dialing in from and um, how you enjoying Makeup Monday now that it's back. We have been, this is now the fifth week of the return of Makeup Monday. So yeah. Let me know how you're finding it. Um, also, I'm assuming everyone can hear me and see me okay because we haven't had any comments suggesting otherwise. And let's head over to Twitter. I'm gonna, maybe this time we'll start from the top. So looking at the most recent submission and I'm gonna skip the ones that are not from the current week. So we're not going back into previous weeks. We're just gonna do the current week. Nekaman, his first time having a go with Maker Monday. Excellent, let's have a look. Um, on his Tableau public profile. So he's created this visualization. I'm just going to check the chat. Excellent. Tammy, good to see you online. Alan, hello from France. We've got Andrew from Syracuse, New York, and Metehan from, I don't know here, where? And somebody clearly from London. I, well, I'm not actually from London, but I'm dialing in from London. <clears throat> okay, so let's go back. Oh, yeah, <laughs> I just literally, I'm just pulling up yours. Sorry, uh, that's, that's funny. I, I guess your Twitter handle didn't say your name. So he created a tiled map for Europe using hexagon shapes. My first comment would be, and this is not to discourage these maps and experimentation at all, <clears throat> the best use for these tile maps are geograph geographies where things are kind of like neatly divided up. Like you'll see it in the US that on the East Coast where the states are much smaller, it kind of gets a bit jumbled up. But because the states are generally fairly chunky and they're kind of neatly divided because it's a bit more of like, um, not, is the, I don't know if the right was artificial, deliberate lines that they made, you know, back in the days, rather than when you look at Europe, where wars have changed the borders all the time. So countries have weird shapes. So it can be a bit tricky to find the right spot. So for example, where Luxembourg is, is where I personally would put Germany, because it's the center, um, geography, uh, geographically speaking. And, you know, and then Poland feels like really far away. And so when you look at this, you don't recognize Europe as a shape. Whereas if you look at a, a US map in this style, you will recognize the US as a shape because it's just, it looks more like it. Um, so that would be my one piece of feedback on this. Now we have average internet latency. Make sure to include a, like a unit. So what is this? megabits per second, I'm guessing, but I don't know. So tell me what this unit is. Um, and then as I hover, again, that should be labeled. So average latency, Q1, Q2, Q3, Q4. Is that across all of those years or is it just for one of the years? And then what is that? What is that, lab what is that number? 
And now when you when you look on the screen, you see that the line goes from dark red to yellow, but the axis for the color legend isn't fixed. And what I mean by that is, if I can persist this tooltip, I cannot. So I can't move my mouse because then the tooltip disappears. But move your eyes to the right side where the original color legend is, the bar with going from 100.7 to 431.1. 431 is red, 100 is yellow, but in this Vision tooltips, 53 is red and 33 is yellow. So these are different, uh, you know, the color distribution is the same or the color range is the same, but the numbers that anchor it, so the, the fixed axis for this color range is not the same, but it should be because that should be consistent. So the 53 should be some sort of orange and the 33 should be some sort of orange and you're double encoding here anyway. So the steep decline of the line already gives me visually that from Q1 down to Q4, it's really decreased for whatever reason. So I don't need the color to also tell me the same thing. So it's okay if the color is consistent or you don't use color at all for it, make it black or make it gray or something. Um, and then, yeah, I would say, is this an average number across Q1, Q2, Q3, Q4? Or do you want to have a separate line for each of the years, in which case you would create a distinct um, date, <laughs> a distinct uh, date format, and then use year as the detail so that you get three lines, one for 2019, sorry, four lines, 2019, 2020, 21, 22. Um, so you can compare, maybe there's a difference between the different years across the quarters. Okay. Um, Oh, I guess latency would be milliseconds. Oh, I was thinking download speeds. Okay, so far, okay. All right, and we've got Brittany from Florida, nice, and Michelle from Boston area. Great to see the usual suspects online. So, um, dun, dun, dun. <laughs> okay, a bit of skipping along. Okay, next one is a map from Tou Jing Sheng. And it's not found. Okay. Um, as a tip, because I'm just going to skip to the next one, but if you make updates, just override your existing one so that the link doesn't change because otherwise whatever you've posted will turn into a 404 error and uh, you don't want that. So don't delete what's already on Table Public. Just override it with your new version so that the link stays up to, like, stays, persists, and then you just have the newest version on there. Otherwise, I would probably maybe delete the link and, uh, sorry, delete the tweet and send out a new one. Okay, the, so the title here is, um, so this is from Otto. Our download time's fast enough now. See the averages across Europe year on year. So Europe should be capitalized. Um, and I'd also capitalize C because it's a new sentence. And I don't really know if the title makes me want to explore this. I don't know times fast enough now. What does it mean? Fast enough compared to what? And so I'm going to age myself here. But when I started using the internet in 1995, uh, it was all modems, really slow. You can, you know, have that funky tone. So it was really slow. And then, you know, over the years, I think it was probably in about 99 downloading a song, which of course nobody did, but if you were to do it, hypothetically speaking, three, I think a song was at the time, like the MP3 was like, you know, three megabytes or so. If, is that right? I think it was. And it would take like half an hour um, and no one could call you on the phone in the meantime. So, you know, that's what I'm reflecting on. I'm like, yeah, of course download speeds are fast enough, but we're all impatient. So anyway, enough detours is this title going to entice me to explore this? I don't know, because I'm not really getting anything like visually from this that makes me think, oh, there's like, because it says now, fast enough now, like, but I'm not getting any kind of um, temporal line. Like I'm not getting a timeline of this is what it used to be. This is what it is now. And I'm getting these fairly old fashioned icons that look like, like none of them, they're not consistent. The two cloud ones are, because they're the same. But these are all different styles. You know, one is in color, one like one is bigger, 
one is smaller. This one looks really old school. And I, so a large email, 15 megabytes, but that's not the email. That's the attachment, right? An email wouldn't, if it's literally just text, it would never be 15 megabytes, I guess, unless you write a bunch of novels and attach them in one, but, but it's still an attachment. Music album, 70 megabytes, TV show. But I, okay, so click on the icon. Okay, let's do that, email. So that's pretty fast, less than a second in most places. Germany not doing so well. Um, that's pretty good. And we see, what I like is that we see visually because of the colors, we see places that are over, I'm guessing over 1.2. Well, we've got 1.3 here and 1.3 there, and I guess there's a decimal point that makes a difference in the color. Um, but we see the countries where it takes longer. But what's the what's the answer to the question? That's my biggest point here. If you ask a question in the title, you have to answer it, or you have to give people a strong enough indication of how they should answer it. I don't know if you know, like if something takes less than a second, it's hard to argue it's slow because, I mean, a second is over very quickly. If I want to download a two-hour movie in HD, so now, see, now we have a problem. What's 400 seconds? I have to do the math in my head and break it down to minutes to make it meaningful, because I don't count in seconds once it goes over 90 seconds, and then it turns into minutes for me. So I don't really know what to do with this, quite frankly. So I would love, I love the idea that there is, me driving this interactivity and me choosing something like, okay, how long is it going to take me to do this? You know, but maybe it could have more of a story. Maybe it could be, you know, you're going on a flight across Europe. So you need a movie that's at least an hour, maybe even two hours, depending on where you're flying. How long, you know, how much time do you need to download this before you fly? Like if you're at the airport and you've got pretty sh shabby Wi-Fi, how long is it going to take? Like, come up with something that's a bit punchier. Okay, that was a long, long-winded answer. Um, so we've got, so I'm trying to check the chat because I think Andy isn't online. Um, so Matthias, welcome. So great to see that you are checking this out as a German. Hello, hello, guten Abend. Um, this is quite accurate. Yes, we have, um, and then we've got Tammy, Brittany. Okay, there's a bit of chat going. I'm just trying to check if there's any questions because I have to flip back and forth with the windows. Okay. Um, let me move to the next viz. Uh, average internet speed. Okay, here we have small multiples and we have little line charts. Um, so I'm trying to um, look at different types of visualizations so we don't just look at maps or just the bar charts. First impression, don't know about you guys, but you're welcome to shout it out in the chat if you like, is the colors. Like it's quite hard on the eyes because we've got a dark background, but we also have an image in the background. So you see there's like a window with a giant cursor. Um, and then we have this really hot pink slash magenta on this dark background, but with this color stuff in, in the back. So it's too much going on for my visual perception here, I would say if you want to stick with the color theme, the one thing that is going to make this immediately better is removing the background image. So get rid of that window and cursor thing and just make it that consistent, really dark blue, the darkest, darkest color on that background and just make it a you know plain background. And then the grid lines being this turquoise as well, again, is something that's quite hard on the eyes. So maybe that could all be a bit more subtle. And I, because the grid lines are everywhere, I don't really know which chart starts where. And like, I can see the line where it starts and ends, but where's my axes? Like what's going on there? I would prefer getting rid of the grid lines. I would try that, getting rid of the grid lines and then having very kind of minimalist, they can be very light, but white so that they're nice and visible, um, just a X and Y axis. They don't even have to be labeled necessarily because you've got your start and end labels here. But I would try that and see what that looks like because the grid lines are quite um, are quite hard. Now, one thing I don't understand is whether these are all, so, I mean, 44, 43 and 42 are very close together. So I can't tell 
whether the axis is fixed properly and they all have a common axis. Because also here, 29 looks like it's almost the same as 40 and 36. Like, are they all individual axes with their different ranges? Or are they truly fixed to a common baseline? That would be interesting to know. Okay. Do, do, do. Oh, we are we are seeing a lot of different types of visualizations. I like it. Um, okay, <laughs> Michelle, that's great. <laughs> yes, yeah. I I also think small multiples are great, and somebody who does that really well um, um, is Rob Redburn. He makes really neat small multiples but they're typically really large like he might include all the different well not counties in the uk but you know even smaller um so you, you know he might have dozens of small multiples but they're really typically really well done anywho we have james newton's vis and i like that tableau public now so if i scroll well i guess there's there's no scrolling required for the app for the viz but i can now see at the top what the name is before that was always up there and it would kind of disappear as you scroll down on the page. So James Newton's viz. Um, so we have this, well, I would, so I would call this a snail chart and I know it's not, but that's, that's my name for it, given what it looks like. It's a bit like a starburst with, I, yeah. Does somebody have a technical term for this? Cause I don't, um, but I'm thinking like a, prehistoric kind of um, stone thing. Um, yeah, again, don't know the English word. So anywho, we're starting with, okay, countries above or below the average internet download speeds. So the average is somewhere between the UK and Germany. So does, so being above the speed means being faster? I'm guessing, or is this slower? I'm guessing it's faster, um, judging kind of by the names of the countries and, and the map. So the map is, it's useful because you see the distribution and having south, like Southeastern Europe and, and the UK surprisingly actually, because I've got good internet experience here and better than in Germany. But anyway, I'm just one person. So I think the map is useful for having the perspective of where are most of the orange countries and where are most of the blue countries, but the map is extremely small. And okay, so I, I can use the map, but I would make the map bigger so it fills as much of that circle as possible, even if it means you have to, because you know the, the um, Canary Islands, you can't really include any, like they're not, they're not interactive, they're part of Spain, um, but then Iceland, that would still fit. So I think I would just make that bigger. Now, I want to go back to the title. So which countries are above or below the average internet download speeds across Europe? If there was a book title, would you buy it? Maybe that's a good question to ask yourself. Radio chart, that's the one. Um, thank you, Michelle. So if, and it doesn't have to, it doesn't have to be clever. It should be clear. It doesn't have to be punny, funny, um, a play on words, but it should be something that, encourages people to be like oh well actually i'm curious about the answer to this question or i want to at least like look at what this thing is below what, what is this chart currently it wouldn't make me it wouldn't make me want to buy the book um, i'm trying to reword it in my head because i'm thinking that could be a, a useful segment of this review reworking titles kind of in real time just to not just say, hey, we need better titles, but also what could some of these better titles sound like? Um, so it could start, it, it could even be two sentences. It could be, you know, um, internet download speeds across Europe vary, full stop. It looks like, I can't count the number of countries very quickly, but there are a number of countries above and a number of countries below. It could even be, you know, um, most well, most Western European, Western and Central European countries have, a, I don't know if I would go for above average anyway. Um, because again, a, a thinking in above average or below average is a little bit, it, it's extra work. Like, is there something else that could be this midpoint or that could be the, the benchmark? So maybe 
it could be a country that's the benchmark. So Germany or UK, you know, they are very close to the average. You, I don't know what the average is. Oh, the average is 116. So you could say, um, you know, internet speeds, sorry, uh, internet download speeds across Europe vary. There are 20 countries where speeds are slower than, than the UK and I don't know, 25 countries where it's faster. Something like, like something that makes people buy into it. So if I have a US audience, I would probably relate it to the US. Not in this case, because we don't have the US data, but try to give people like a starting point that they can relate to, because currently it's a little bit vague. And I think I should move on to the next viz. Otherwise, we're not going to review very many, are we? Um, OK. Here is another very different viz. And let me see if this is big enough. I can probably make it a little bit bigger before, before I'm losing. Yeah, you can all still see that. So uh, technical home is not snail chart. It should be. Thank you. <laughs> um, Fossil spirals, what are they called? Um, Versteinerung, yeah. <laughs> Literally something that has turned to stone. Germans, I love how literal we are with stuff. And I didn't recognize it until I lived overseas and I talked to people about German terms for things and they're like, oh, there are a bunch of funny ones, which I will not say on a live stream um, because sometimes, well, to me, they sound just totally normal because it's the language I grew up with. But saying them now, I'm like, oh my God, that's really blunt, rude, funny, inappropriate. Uh, but yeah, if anyone's curious, we should maybe have a chat. So EU's internet speeds are faster than ever. Okay, I'm going to do a check. Are all of these EU countries, I'm just having a quick noisy. It looks like it. Okay, that's good. I was a bit worried because sometimes EU and Europe and... Is, is in Eurozone are kind of all getting mixed up and it's it's good to be very accurate on that. Um, I think the start, EU's internet speed is a little bit clunky because if you say it out loud, EU's is hard to say and you wouldn't really say it like that. You would maybe say internet speeds in the EU are faster than ever. But I like the title because it makes me think, Oh, really? Faster than ever? Like there's a little bit of intrigue because there's a bit of a comparison, competitive element. So download speed on the way up. Upload speed also going up. So my understanding is if the things, if the charts are shifting to the right, they're getting, things are getting faster. And then latency, which is the, the delay, is how I explained it in my head it should shift to the left because that's what you want. So I I really like the, this, this visualization. Um, I think the top part sells it for me. The bottom is a lot of detail, so I kind of have to take a bit more time to go through it. One thing I would add here is a little explanation of how to read the chart because some people might not fully understand how to read this. So, you know, for of course, for us, most of us, we would understand it shows the distribution of where the speeds were. So I'm just looking on the left column. You know, the distribution was lower on the spectrum and it kind of shifted over time. So now average speeds are higher and also as are maximum speeds. But say that or even just say faster, you know, faster is better or further to the right is better is faster so that people are sure because then they're like, oh, okay, so what does this actually show? But it doesn't really, I mean, it says distribution, but even that, is probably sometimes a bit too specific or too technical for some people to understand. Okay. Um, double X axis. Oh, at the bottom. Yeah, I see what you mean, Matthias. Like the, the top and bottom. And it gets a bit busy in the middle. And it could simply be putting more white space between the top and the bottom section of the chart. Do you then get the challenge that this will not fully display in a nice little thumbnail on Twitter, but that could definitely be removed or it could just be simplified. You just have zero and 250. So it's at least not as many numbers. Um, yes, make a one day hangout party. Um, okay, Matthias knows his, he knows his rocks. Okay, Reyes. 
Um, made in Power BI. Let's have a look. We don't get that many of those, so let's check them out. Discord chat. We yeah. Has anyone done out of curiosity? Has anyone ever done a Twitter space? I'm keen to try them out. Slightly intimidated because I just don't know. You know, if I press a button, is it just going to go live and suddenly I'm talking into the Twitterverse? If anyone's keen to be a test, a guinea pig, and we can hang out on in a Twitter space, I'm totally up for it. Maybe maybe not till November, but <laughs> but then. Okay, mm, I'm going to try and make this bigger because I can see it's a bit small on the screen for you guys. Okay, 150% and we'll just scroll. Internet speeds across Europe. Again, you know, same thing for the title. Think of it, would you buy the book if it was called that? The average, should be the average download speed. And then it looks like there's a bit of an extra space maybe around Europe. has increased 110% between... 2019 quarter one, 2022 quarter two. You know what? I would say if you use it in a sentence, either spell out quarter or just say between January and June. Um, if, if that is the start and finish of those quarters, I'm assuming they are calendar quarters. Because again, for some people it's like, you know, what are we referring to? What quarters? For example, at the company I work at, at Snowflake, our financial quarter actually starts in February, quarter one. So that's always what I have in the back of my mind. So we have a bit of a listing of the different KPIs. And I think that's a good idea. I would just make it pop a bit more because currently, when you just glance at it, it's numbers and text at different spots on the page, but it doesn't really look like there is something purposeful behind it. So I can kind of see that there's boxes around it. I don't know if that's visible for you guys, um, but they're not obvious. So make the stuff pop a little bit more somehow. It could be an outline around it. Like if you want to have a nice KPI dashboard, I would make that visually a bit more clear. And um, so East London. Okay, so. Okay, so uh, Deutschland. So this looks like, this is cool. It looks like every country name is in that country's language, which I hadn't seen before. I think that's a very neat idea, especially because most countries are still recognizable, um, except that one. <laughs> uh, Slovenia, Slovakia, Finland. Okay, I think that's really cool. And then we've got the line chart. So we have selected country and average. What's UE? Um, would be good to know, might be average across Europe. Um, so the average is much lower compared to Iceland. Well, Iceland is, I think, pretty good with their internet speed. So let's pick Denmark. Okay, it's also pretty good. Let's pick, I'm not sure what that country is. Mm. Let's pick one that I know, <laughs> Hungary. Um, okay, so they're they're lower than um, than the average. So and we've got the so so I think that's really neat. Um, I think I would just yeah update this top a little bit to make it just visually a bit pop a bit more. Okay, let me quickly check the chat. Twitter Space. Twitter Space is a bit like what was that thing called that app where you had to get invited and it was only on on, on Apple. Um, that app that everyone wanted to be in. That yeah. Um, but it's basically, it's just audio. So it's kind of like a radio show, I guess, but you can be on it and you can start talking. Mm, okay. Let's have a quick look at Simon's. Clubhouse. That's the one. I downloaded it because I got invited and I got in and I, and I thought kind of like my first time on Twitter in 2009. I'm like, what's going on here? I have no idea what everyone's talking about. I don't know what I'm supposed to say, so I just left. Um, I couldn't. I couldn't quite see the appeal, but I like the idea of Twitter Spaces because anyone who's on Twitter could just participate, and maybe we can all be friends. So, yeah, let me know. Internet in European countries. Well, it's so. First thought is: is it like availability of internet connections? Is it how many people have an internet connection? Is it internet speed? Is it internet coverage? Like there's different terms that I would associate with just internet. So I'd clarify the title, 
this is probably my most common feedback, isn't it? The title, but I think it's really important because it's the first thing you see. It's like on your book cover. So, but I like the three columns of download speed, upload speed, and average latency because you you get that consistency. Like every column is built the same way. You've got a color legend, you've got a map, and you've got a bar chart. And then I suppose we have a reference line for the average. Yes, that's right. So in there again, I would for the X axis, I would repeat what the unit is of measurement. So you have it at the top, um, repeat it at the bottom and in the milliseconds again, Moldova doing really well. So latency, um, mean average latency, yeah. And I would explain, so I think download speed and upload speed is fairly, it's not self-explanatory, but I think people know what's, what's meant. Latency, you should explain because most people will not know what latency really truly means. They might get it, but if you ask them to explain it, people will probably struggle. Um, should we do one more for good measure? Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> Michelle, yes, I'm with you. Uh, she says uh, the first comment is usually about text that's too small for her old eyes to read. Well, I'm wearing glasses and maybe it's the screen, I don't know, but it has to be easy to read. If I have to squint, like I've, I, I went to a restaurant yesterday and the menu was printed so small. I'm like, why is there so much white space on the page? I know this is a first, first world problem, but don't make me squint. Like if somebody, and he didn't have his reading glasses, he zoomed on his phone screen and he read on his screen on top of the menu. And I thought they could just print the menu in bigger font. Like there was plenty of space or just make it A4. Like it, it doesn't have to be difficult. I think we've left the phase behind where every font was really small and just lowercase. And it was a this design trend like in the 2000s. And I think we need to just like make stuff easy, much like payments, right? If I want to spend money, I don't want to jump through hoops. It's like, take my money, but make it easy. Let me just pay, like, tap my card. Don't make me sign something or send an invoice. And equally, if you want me to read your stuff, like, let me read it by making the text big enough. Big enough. Okay, one more. This one from Iris. Because I go on too many detours, but maybe it's the time of day, um, close to bedtime. Average download speed in Europe. This is by Iris. So um, now I totally get that for, um, and this is actually a good idea to have Makeup One Day somewhere in the title because then you can easily have that in the name of your visualizations and in your Tableau public profile. Like you can keep track on th of things quite easily. And as you save the visualization, it will put in the file name as well. Like if you happen to, or, or if you're downloading a, an image and stuff. So I get that. It does make the title look a bit kind of messy. It makes it look a bit like a file name. So I would take it out of the actual title on the viz because that should be more of a, hey, this is your invitation to check this out. Same feedback applies on the title as I've given so far. And I like that she's comparing just the most two, the two most recent years. And, you know, it's cool to see that things are still getting faster. I mean, I'm, I'm, I grew up in a time where the internet was just text. There were a few photos. There was, there was no ads. There was no videos autoplaying. There was no animations. Like none of that existed on there. It was so blissful. It was still slow because of course this was what we are we in like 20, 27 years ago. Oh my God, 27 years ago. But that point aside, it's cool to, that this, this shows me still, things are still getting faster, even though all the time, that we're living in now, we're always like, well, it's, it's never been faster. Like how much faster can it get? But I guess we're making the content on the internet more complex. So it has to continue getting faster to give us a really good user experience. So another piece of feedback. So Iceland is leading the charge. So this is basically ranked by 2000, 2021 speeds. No, no, I don't know what it's ranked by. What is it ranked by? Because because it's not oh hmm okay I'm confused because we have 20 uh, sorry 210 being the top speed the average download speed sorry 
then we've got 199, but then 196 is in rank four instead of rank three. So I don't understand that. So I expect that either the green dots go really neatly down, like a kind of like a pyramid or like a like a line, or the purple ones, but neither of them do. So I'm not sure how this is ranked, but I have to do the work of clicking on the next number to go to the next page to see the next countries. And I will say, as somebody who 99 times out of 100 does not go to the second page of my Google search results, why should I do this work? Why do I have to do the clicking? And also, I'm just going to get a very similar looking viz with just different um, abbreviations. Let me prove it to you. <laughs> and I'll prove it again. And somehow, so the axes aren't fixed, so the dots always stay quite far to the right, but the numbers change quite heavily. So we had 100 here, next page we had 160, and first page we had 200. So the axis needs to be fixed so that it just keeps shifting to the left. And there's nothing stopping you from making this one very long this, very tall, um, to show everything on one page, because that I think has more impact because you can see how far they are apart, you know, between Iceland, number one, being 210, and MK, which I can't think of right now. Um, Macedonia? I don't know. Um, at 33. Let me, let me just check. It might be Macedonia, but I'm, I'm not sure of the abbreviation. But it's probably, yes, that's probably it. So, yeah. I clicked on it because, you know, the purpose of this is giving feedback. But I don't think most of your audience would click on it unless they have a compelling reason, like their salary depends on it, their bonus depends on knowing what number it is, or they have to use that data or that information in something else. So that would be my feedback there. Um, and da -da -da -da, fair point scrolling, either and clicking, label on the left and right. Yes, exactly right, Michelle. I was just, as I started reading your point, I'm like, yeah, actually, this could be spelled out. There's so much space. Why not spell out the countries? Especially because, you know, when you say Switzerland in English, you wouldn't really think CH. Like some countries don't have the most obvious abbreviations for English speakers or for, for anyone, really. Because in, oh, geez, sorry. I just need to decline a call. Uh, <laughs> never mind. Um, that was my brother. So, Spelling it out because you have all that empty space is a really good idea. And you could make those labels nice and big. Um, there is that space. So other suggestions are making the list horizontal. So you could, because then you could see, um, I guess the question then is, do we still, so I associate speed with, no, don't call me again. <laughs> Going, going from like left to right, that's for me like speed. So that's fine. But like lower to higher, would you still, would you still think of it as speed if something is higher? Um, but yeah, so you could do it a horizontal list with all the countries and having the stuff vertically. Stacked column chart, also a good idea. And yeah, I think that's what I, all I have to say on IRS is this. <laughs> My brother should join the live stream. <laughs> Um, not sure if he has much to say about database, but I could I could always ask him. Well, but he's not on Twitter. Um, he could he could watch it on YouTube. And um, yes, another great suggestion from how do I say your name? Do I say Birchin? Oh, I'm sorry. I hope I got that right. Um, to put the label of the country. So I've just got the image here now. So if you could move the label literally right next to the line so it's much closer because at the moment there's a big gap even if you spell it out so that's a good idea as well uh okay i got that name right Virgin. excellent cool and um, that's it from me this week i don't yet know what's happening next week i should be okay for this review i'm just trying to think because yeah i don't have a i don't have an event next week so i should be okay for the normal time um but you'll see you'll see it scheduled by andy and then um I hope you'll join me again next week. It's always great to have a bit of a crew dialing in. I'm just trying to see 24 people. Excellent. Uh, thank you all for showing up and for your many, many comments. I really enjoyed seeing the interactions and it's great to see your suggestions as well because I don't have all the ideas and all the solutions and 
it's good to have you know lots of different ideas for people to reflect on so i hope that is helpful for you for either this week or for next week not sure what andy has planned in terms of data set for next week but looking forward to seeing all your visits pop in and uh, yeah i'll see you next week take care stay safe 